Hi, I am Tiago Rangel, Professor of Ecology at the Federal University of Goiás in Brazil. One of the most intriguing natural phenomena is the distribution of life on Earth. South America, the most biodiverse continent, is particularly interesting. Contributing to its exuberant biodiversity, South America has the Andes, the longest and the only transtropical mountain range on Earth, which sits right beside the Amazon, the planet's largest tropical rainforest and river basin. But the causes of biodiversity patterns have long resisted explanation, until now, for very good reasons. Ecological and evolutionary processes that drive the origin and maintenance of biodiversity act and interact on such immense scales in space and time that attempting to understand them with real-world experiments is simply out of the question. Despite great scientific progress over the last century, studying complex phenomena strictly by observation and conjecture is quite limiting and always leaving room for doubt. How can we know if our explanation is right or wrong? Yes, we know that new species arise from ancestral species through the splitting and isolation of populations. We also know that species evolve in response to changing climate over millennia and that many have undergone natural extinctions in the pre-human past. We do know that mountain ranges, like the Andes, are centers of diversification. We know that tropical climates have been more stable in the past than climates at higher latitudes. But are these the main causes of biodiversity in South America? Are they even sufficient explanations? Five years ago, my American colleague Robert Caldwell and I assembled an international interdisciplinary team of researchers to tackle the long-standing question of causes of biodiversity. And we were bold enough to challenge the South America mystery. Our plan was to reconstruct the past history of South America in a computer-simulated virtual reality. Building a simulation model is like designing a parallel universe or creating your own matrix. Of course, in our simulation, we implemented the current best scientific understanding of how ecology and evolution creates biodiversity patterns. Then, we asked if the emerging patterns of biodiversity in our artificial virtual world matches reality. Would the simulated Amazon and Atlantic rainforest be as biodiverse as the real ones? Would virtual Patagonia or simulated Atacama Desert have just a handful of species? To start with, our collaborators at the Open University in, uh, in the UK, Neil Edwards and Phil Holden, built an amazing model of ancient climates of South America, reaching from the present back 800,000 years ago, covering the last eight cycles of glaciation. In our simulated world, the climate fluctuations of the past affect when and where our virtual species can survive. They are also limited by their dispersal capacity. So, the oscillating past climate of South America ends up causing the splitting, joining and extinction of populations. We also modeled, modeled how species evolve their tolerance to the environment in response to climate fluctuations. In our paper published in Science, we documented the times and places in the simulation that new species originated, where and where they persisted the longest, where and when extinctions occurred. In this way, we were able to identify the conditions that promote or limit the origination, extinction, and persistence of species, that is, the cradles, graves, and museums of biodiversity. 
we found that the tropical Andes provided ideal conditions for the built-up of biodiversity. The up and down slope movement of species as they tracked glacial cycles promoted isolation and diversification. So, it is no coincidence that many groups of plants and animals reach their peak of diversity on the Amazonian slopes of the Andes. However, climate fluctuations that split populations also promote extinctions. So, at the same time that the Andes drive emergence of new species, many others will dig their graves along the Andes. But that's not all. As is speculated by many scientists, our model shows that every once in a while, the changing climate of South America opens a climatic bridge for the Andean species to di disperse to the Atlantic rainforest, and vice versa. This explains why these two regions share so many closely related species of birds and plants. Each time this climatic bridge closes again, the isolated species take their own evolutionary paths, on the way to becoming new and independent species. The cool thing about simulation models is that they let us evaluate any what-if, just like in a lab experiment. As Hawking and Ludnow wrote, the laws of nature determine the probabilities of various futures and pasts, rather than determining the future and past with certainty. So we asked, what would South America biodiversity look like without the Andes? Is this unique mountain range as important as we think it is? To answer these questions, we decided to use either a virtual bulldozer and make the topography of South America smoother. Sure enough, the rich biodiversity of South America gradually vanished as the Andes became shorter and flatter. Mountain ranges are indeed birthplaces of biodiversity. But it's a shame that there aren't many in the tropics, which is the reason why the Andes are so special. Finally, our simulated map of biodiversity closely resembles present-day map of biodiversity of birds, mammals, and plants. But this is, in fact, really puzzling since most present-day species are certainly much older than 800,000 years of our simulation. We think the most likely explanation for this result is that, despite the geologically short timescale of our model, it is still able to capture the most important natural processes that drive patterns of biodiversity in South America. After all, the splitting, shuffling, and disappearance of species as climate fluctuates should be affecting all species similarly, regardless of their age. Indeed, the current unprecedented rapid climate change has begun to shift the species ranges, which is already affecting human lives in many ways. While on a different time scale, our simulations show the power of climate to shape life on Earth. We invite you to read more about the cradles, graves, and museums of biodiversity in South America in our paper published in Science.